Well, I want to try to do like a then and now thing. So, once upon a time, Gettysburg wasn't very good. Well, I shouldn't say that. Let me, let me put it like this. Uh, the National Park didn't own as much as it owns now. Okay, and so a lot of things were in private hands. A lot of very important parts of the battlefield were in private hands. And so that area there where we're looking, there was once a Stuckey's, which is, I guess, some kind of restaurant. A Stuckey's and a Texaco. Right on that corner, that's we're on the uh, Emmitsburg Road, and this is the intersection of Wheatfield Road and uh, the Millerstown Road, or Pumping Station Road, whatever you want to call it. How you doing there, Jeff? So, pay attention to that monument. Let me see if this works here with these pictures. Yes, okay, I think it'll work. So, many moons ago, looking at that view, you would see this. Oh, it's not exactly the same view. <laughs> come over here I bet you it's over this way so right there you can see that monument we'll go back to the original or to the shot we're looking at now okay there's the monument there it is way back when and there's a Stuckey's behind it you could see if you look off to the right of the Stuckey's you see the trees there of uh, uh, Pitzer's wood woods um, now I'll take it off and you can see them now. There they are. And then beyond that, you can see the faint blue of the mountains. Same thing here, faint blue of the mountains, but no more Stuckies. Here's a little closer shot of that monument. You want a 360 degree view? Okay. Uh, there's the Sherfy farm coming around here the Wentz house the Wentz house was here but it's no longer there actually I think it's right over there I believe that's the foundation or at least one of the buildings um, and then we come over this is where the Stuckey's was okay this is the famous corner shot well I'm making it famous now um, detail shot there cool little old motorcycle there and then we continue along, and there's Pumping Station, Millerstown Road, whatever you want to call it, going towards the Longstreet Tower. There's the Longstreet Tower. And we come around, we're looking southish now on the Emmitsburg Road, Route 15. Um, and here is the Peach Orchard. And then we continue down this way. See that beautiful big cloud there, which really does not, uh, the Instagram does not do it justice. Um, it is paintable. And uh, yes, so anyway, down that way is the Wheatfield Road. So here, once again, for those of you just joining us, in this spot here, way back in the olden days, there was a Stuckey's. Now, I guess I'm too young to know what the hell a Stuckey's is, but I think they still exist, because I Googled it, and I saw locations for Stuckey's in Virginia and stuff, so maybe there was a few of them left, or I don't know. But uh, let's go over. We're going to cross the street and uh, play a little game of Frogger right now and uh, see what monument that is and see what we can glean from the monument. Wait for these cars to go. It's the smart thing to do. Okay, this guy's turning. So we're going to go across. And here we go. Old Stucky's Corner. It's the 63rd Pennsylvania. And let's see, they were in a lot of battles. All right, let's see. Yeah. President Gettysburg, 296 officers and men killed one man, wounded three officers, and 26 men captured or missing four men. Okay, so you, you get that. So it's 296 officers and men killed one, wounded three. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 296 men killed one man, wounded three officers, and 26 men 
captured or missing four men. Okay. It's a pretty cool statue or monument though. Alright, let's see here. Well, they were mustered in at Pittsburgh in August through September of 61. And they were mustered out July 31st through September 9th, 1864. They were the part of the 1st Brigade of the 1st Division of Sickles' 3rd Corps. I was on a tour once, and the tour guide told me that when you see a monument that has a state seal on an iron plaque like this, that means that a, I believe it was a, the majority, if not all, of the money uh, raised for the construction of the monument was contributed to uh, by the state. I haven't verified that, but he was a ranger, so I'm assuming he's correct. So this is where Stucky's parking lot would have been. And you can kind of see now how it was leveled off up here. That's interesting. But I just can't imagine, though. That's so weird to me that there was... And it wasn't just a Stucky's that we had on, on the battlefield. You had a hotel up by the Peace Light. Uh, just until, I mean, in my lifetime... You had um, a hotel right next to General Pickett's buffet, Phoebe Buffet, and uh, hello, Linda Lou. Um, oh, a whole bunch of other things. There were things down. We'll, we'll get into like stuff one day. I'll, I'll go down and I'll show you the horse trough down at uh, Little Round Top in the uh, slaughter pen area there. Um, there was a... Uh, horse trough cut into a boulder so that when people took their horse and buggy down you know because it's a few miles out of town and it's uh you're kind of out there even even today like if you go and you go on a bike tour today a lot of things people ask us when we go on a bike tour they go are there places to stop along the way and get snacks and water and we just laugh at them and we say yeah, no there's one place to get water on the way out and then one place to get water on the way in and there's a long gap in between and uh it's so it's still you're still kind of out on a limb when you come out on the battlefield if you're not in a car like you're gonna you better prepare uh yourself with some snacks and plenty of water especially in these hot summer days so in the old days they had a horse trough cut into a uh a boulder down there and I believe there was a water line that went into it yeah I think there's a there's a like a notch cut in where the pipe used to go um, they uh, <laughs> they did not do such a good job back then but you know it was all private property Jason you got to remember that this was all fought over people's property and the property was passed down and the park service was new you know it was like 20 or 30 or so years after the war so, so, you know, they don't just come in and just buy everything up. It was all piece by piece. I heard another ranger saying the other day that uh, there's 6,000 acres of national park, but about 18,000 acres of battlefield. And there's a distinction there. We, we use the word interchangeably with uh, national park and battlefield, but the battlefield was much larger than what we have preserved. Um, for example, that whole part of Steinwehr Avenue where all the tchotchke shops are and the McDonald's and the hotels and Pickett's Buffet and the neighborhood behind it, Colt Park, um, that was all nothing. There were a couple of buildings here and there, but it was mostly farmland at the time of the battle. And, you know, conf Confederate troops were, you know, like, at times come came over that area. So there was... Uh, there's a lot of battlefield that is yet to be preserved, obtained and preserved. And, and that's why uh, it's good to uh, donate to uh, preservation causes because, you know, they take that money, they buy up the land, and then they turn it over to the park service, which I think is a good thing. Not particularly good if you get screwed over like the people in the uh, observation tower did, which um, is another long story. I saw somebody commented about the observation tower. Um, yeah, 
a good portion of this was Camp Cult as well. Um, there was a swimming pool over by, uh, by the angle just in front of it. You know, it's weird the way each generation looks at uh, sacred ground and, and how they use it and how they preserve it and if they preserve it. You know, Gettysburg is, I think, one of the best, if not the best. I haven't been to every one, but uh, Gettysburg and Antietam, in my estimation, are up there at the top. Um, but anyway, the, the observation tower, somebody had mentioned that they're glad that that's gone. I understand what you mean about it being an eyesore, but I think um, it was overall a bad move for tourism. Uh, it was a bad move for education because the big thing... You always hear people talk about how boring history is, but it's not. It's not boring at all. The problem is the way it's presented to people. You have that teacher that talks like Ben Stein in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and history's gonna be really freaking boring. If you come to a place like Gettysburg and there's nothing entertaining to do and you're a child, it's going to be boring. And that's why it's important that there, there are things to do, ways to see the battlefield, ways to experience history, um, aside from the old fashioned classroom lecture setting, because that, that doesn't do it. It doesn't do it. You need to get your face in it and you need to get up there and you need to look. You need to get into that 300 foot tower and get a bird's eye view of the battlefield so you can see everything and you can get a really good picture of it. It's an educational tool and I know a lot of people didn't like to look at it and it does ruin the um, effect of throwing yourself back to 1863. But so do these cars going by. So does this pavement. So do these stop signs and these speed limit signs and that electrical box over there. There's a lot of things that take you out of, so does that look, those tractors out on that farm. Why aren't they pulling the, those uh, plows or whatever the hell they are with horses? Like, you know, there has to be, you have to strike a balance. And if the point is to preserve and to teach the lessons of history, then you need to figure out a way to reach people. And I'm telling you, reaching people by sitting around two experts that know everything about it, just sharing all the things that they know and showing off what they know about stuff, that's not going to win people over. That's exactly what puts people to sleep. So you have to, you have, in my mind, you have to include education or uh, entertainment with your education. Because let's face it, the up and coming generations are. I don't even know what the word is. In perpetual childhood. Hell, I mean, even people my age are in perpetual childhood. People going to Disney World at 45 years old without kids. That's weird. All right, let's see now. Let's see what people are saying. I'm sure people are telling me I'm an asshole for saying what I was saying about the tower, but let's go back and see. Uh, camp cult, okay. Pickets buffet is necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever found any artifacts? What are buildings in the background? Okay, no, I haven't found any artifacts. And if I did, I'd look at it, I'd take a picture of it, and I'd leave it, and I'd tell somebody at the park service, which is what everybody should do if you ever find one. That is the Shurfy Farm. Uh, the Shurfy Barn there, that is not the original. That was actually burned during the battle. Um, there, I, I want to say it was Chamberlain, but it could be wrong on this. After the battle, um, some troops, you know, had to go and, on burial detail, and they went into the barn and found the charred bodies of, I believe it was some Zouaves, and uh, yeah, they were, I, 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 I want to say they were wounded, and they, they sought shelter there, and a shell set the barn ablaze, and they couldn't get out because of their wounds, and they... Uh, they hopefully you kind of hope that they died before the fire but maybe some of them didn't i'm sure some of them didn't so that's what that is that's the Sherfy farm there that is the pitzer farm kemper's brigade was uh staging there before pickett's charge and you can't 
you can't really see the farm land from uh, a lot of the Union line. You can see the top of the barn, and that's about it. So they were pretty safe down there. Um, what other buildings do we have? That's about it. Um, off there. Anybody, anybody want to guess the name of that farm? I'll give you a minute to guess. I'm building a swimming pool on a little round top. That would actually be fun because you can make it like water slides and stuff. Um, Mike D. Sylvester, bingo. Bingo to what, Mike? Um, let's see, Christine. That's why living history is such an important aspect of visiting Gettysburg. Yeah, living history is a cool way to do it. I hung out with uh, some guys uh, for a while on a Saturday, and uh, it's cool. Like people, people come over, they want to look at them, and they want to talk to them, and they want to find out stuff. One guy wouldn't shut up. Very true about the interaction. I remember being a kid and enjoyed talking to reenactor, living historian that looked like an 1860 soldier. Yeah, me too. I was like enamored with them. Uh, I'm also building a general sickle salad. Okay. All right. Enough with the Jason Trinetti comedy hour, please. History with Brad. How are you? Um, <clears throat> Do you ever get stupid comments from the public? Careful, Linda. When I worked at Lincoln's home in Illinois, someone said they ruined Lincoln's home when they put siding on it. <laughs> uh, I had a... What the hell was it the other day? Oh, oh, this is, this is a good one. So the other day, a guy comes over to me. I'm at the bike shop, and we're located in the bus lot of the visitor center. And the visitor center... Um, as cool as it is and as beautiful as it is, the, they really didn't do a good job with their signage and their planning of the layout of the roads. And I know this because I deal with the victims of it every day. And um, I almost feel like I'm an employee of the um, Gettysburg Foundation because I probably spend more of my day telling people how to find the visitor center than anything else. So one day, it was during uh, the lead up to bike week, before I got out of town, I had one more day of work, it was a Thursday, and I see this group of bikers uh, walking around the corner, coming out of, uh, out of the trees, down at the south end of the bus lot, for those of you who have been there and know what I'm talking about, but if not, go there and then imagine the story. So the south end of the bus lot, and... <laughs> I, I, I know when I see a group of people or a single person walking from that direction, I know they parked in lot number one where you're supposed to and completely missed the visitor center and walked in the absolute opposite direction. And part of what gives that away is the dumbfounded look they have on their face. It's kind of like this. And they're looking around and they're like, I don't know where it is. And then they're laughing like, we're the idiots, you know, for building this thing uh, so that they can't understand it. Anyway, so 10 or 12 bikers and their, and their women, all dressed in leather, 97 degrees, 60% humidity, uh, nightmare. And 60%, uh, that's nothing, 80% humidity. Um, I see them coming. I know they're going to come over to me. So I hide. And... They go past. I breathe a sigh of relief. But one of them, the last one, the straggler, who's like a, just a slightly behind the rest of the group, he stops and he turns and he comes walking into our little compound of sheds. I'm like, God damn it. And he finds me hiding there behind the bookshelf in the office. And he knocks on the window. So I come out. I walk around. I don't want to talk through the window because I have the air on. I don't want to let the hot air in. Anyway, long story short, I get around to him and he goes, yeah, uh, we're looking for the planetarium. And I go, the what? And he goes, the planetarium. And I go, who told you there was a planetarium here? I don't know. A f friend of mine said that we're going to go see the planetarium, you know, you know, where they got the painting. It's a 15 minute show. And I said, oh, 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 the cyclorama. And he goes, 
yeah, 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 well, that's it, whatever. Planetarium, cyclorama. And I go, well, they're distinctly different things. Um, that was a pretty dumb one. That was the most recent dumb one. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of dumb, I hate to say the word dumb. That was dumb, but most of them are innocent mistakes. It's confusing. People don't understand it. You know, it's a different world. We live in a bubble here and we all understand it because we love it and we're used to it. And it's, uh, it's a nice, comfortable little world to live in. But, uh, you know, the visitor, especially a city person, they come out here, they're like <laughs> completely overwhelmed. Completely overwhelmed. They're like, what's that smell? And you go, that's called fresh air. Um, yeah, I just watched a doc where they talked about the barn burning. Oh, cool. There are no stupid questions to stupid people. That is correct. McLean. No, it's not the McLean farm. Um, Devil's Den is becoming hoods. Hoodlums miniature. Oh, you're still doing okay. Like the crowds that bother the bison. Oh, I love to see. I, <laughs> I just saw a video the other day of, uh, uh, well, it wasn't, it was actually kind of scary as a nine-year-old little girl just got thrown in the air by a bison. Um, I felt bad for the girl. I wanted to kick her parents in the teeth for letting her, like, who, what, what is wrong with you people? Fucking, sorry, freaking idiots to thinking that you can go with wild animals and just, just show them love and they'll treat you okay. And then they eat you. They rip your face off or throw your nine-year-old daughter in the air. Uh, but then there's other ones where there's people acting like jackasses and getting like exactly what they deserve. Um, that one guy didn't want to shut up may have been me. No, it wasn't you, Tim. It was, uh, it was that guy we were waiting to shut up so that we could start the video. Someone asked me on the riverboat, I was a Confederate POW and had a ball and chain and a woman asked why the blue men hated me. <laughs> okay. That's weird. Yeah, tour guiding is fun. Careful, those bikers will be back for you, probably. All right, Jason, see you. Also, we were in the first person and a woman wanted to take a photo of us and we were asking why she had a pocket lantern and she didn't understand. Well, of course she didn't understand. Of course. All right. Uh, okay, so for those of you who joined late, here's what we did. Now, look at this monument here, okay? What did we say this was, the 63rd PA? Yeah. All right, now we're gonna go back across the street. This is the peach orchard. So if you ever come out here, you can see this here. This is the peach orchard. And I'm standing over here by the sign for the Wentz house. And I'm gonna look at that little corner there and that monument, okay? Now, See the monument? There it is. That's what it looks like now. There was once a Stuckey's there. I want to, I think this, I think it was built in the 50s and I think they tore it down in the 70s. I think the park acquired the land in 72 and then restored it sometime thereafter. It might've been 74. <clears throat> but that's it, Stuckey's. Oh, you remember Stuckey's, Brad? I don't ever remember Stuckey's. I, they didn't have them in New Jersey. Or if they did, I, I just didn't ever go to one. But there we go. The old Stuckey's. And that's where it was, right there. So, I don't know. I just thought that was cool. I went and I did another video. Um, the 93rd Pennsylvania right after work because I was doing a little research on it and I discovered that there is a cool, well, you'll just have to wait for the video to come out. That's it, I won't tell you uh, what's so great about it. But, uh, you know, just another, another part of my hashtag get out of the car effort, movement, whatever you wanna call it. All right, let's see. When I worked at Lincoln Boyhood New Mexico Visitor Center, would come to our 1830s cabin with a blazing fire going. People came in and said, it's not so hot in here. <laughs> oh 
understand. Yes, the Alabama guy. Was he from Alabama? I didn't catch that. <clears throat> I'm in Indiana. I'm in Kentucky. Hey, I'm in Pennsylvania. <sighs> okay. All right. Well, I got nothing else for you. So thanks for watching. And uh, remember, next time you come to Gettysburg, get out of the car. Walk around a bit. Bye-bye.